So let us write all the Laplace transform phase together. Delta of t, what is its Laplace transform? One. One. And for all the values of s, there is no restriction on R O T. Next to U of t Laplace transform phase is one, one by, by s. s. And t into U of t Laplace transform is one by s square. One by s square. And what is the corresponding ROC? Real part of S is greater than zero. Even here also, real part of S is greater than zero. Next, T power n into U of T. What is its Laplace transform? N factorial by S power n plus one. Under of the real equation, important all the Laplace transform pairs. E power minus A T into U of T. What is its Laplace transform? One by and by S plus A. Plus A. And this is a causal signal. So for all the causal signals, R O C. Nothing but real part of S is greater than its whole minus E. Similarly, for anti-causal negative sided signal, U of minus T. What is its Laplace transform? One by S plus A only. But there is a difference with respect to R O C less than its whole. Okay. Next, we also have calculated Laplace transform for double-sided exponential function, non-causal, non-causal signal. What is its Laplace transform? Minus two a by s square plus a square. Correct. Just to refer this, I do not remember this exactly. Correct. That one. Minus two a by s square plus a square. Next, cos omega t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? S by s square plus omega square. Okay. Then what is its corresponding Laplace transform? Real part of s t. Greater than zero. Okay. Similarly, sine omega t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? Please prepare Laplace transform. Definitely two questions from fifth, this fourth unit. Laplace transform one long answer question. Z transform one long answer question. So whatever problems we discuss, same model we can expect in the exam. So while finding inverse Laplace transform, definitely you need all these relations. Real part of S greater than zero. So these are the all standard type of input signals uh, for which we calculated Laplace transform phase, and R O C is are important here. Okay. So these are the corresponding Laplace transform properties of R O C are also important. So just one more problem: how to find inverse Laplace transform using partial fraction method? That will be the last problem related to Laplace transform. Please try to solve this now. Completed. Copied this. Yes, ma'am. Next. Write on this. Find the inverse Laplace transform of. Find out the inverse Laplace transform of function. Find out the inverse Laplace transform of the function x of s t equal to s plus phi by s plus phi by s square into s plus two. Write this all this. Okay. So inverse Laplace transform, as I already said, for inverse Laplace transform calculation, we do not use that formula. Actually, we depend only on partial fractions most of the time. Okay. So here, how do we represent this function in partial fractions representation? S plus phi by s square into s plus two, isn't it? A by s. So this is a representation in partial fractions. B by s square plus C by s plus two. So you can go for either shortcut method or comparison of numerator coefficients by taking LCM on right hand side. 
okay so if you take lcm in the denominator s square into s plus 2 will be the lcm and then a a into s into s plus 2 plus b into s plus 2 plus c into s square isn't it so compare s square coefficient that means first common take common s square coefficients s square will be there for a constant a and here s square is not there so simply a plus c next compare s coefficients i mean take common s coefficients or later we will compare s coefficients are 2a plus b okay plus constants what are the constant here s is there so a is not at all related to constant plus 2b and c s square already we have written here so this is a numerator expression and in the denominator s square into s plus 2 as well as here s plus pi by s square into s plus 2 now compare s square coefficients s coefficient and constant coefficient then easily you can find a b c values Tell me the values, A value, B value, C value. First, let us compare constant because constant here is 5 and here is oh, simply 2B. So, compare in the numerator constant coefficients. Compare constant coefficients. Then, what about 2B? 2B equal to 5 and then B equal to 5 by 2. Correct? B equal to 5 by 2. Next, compare S square coefficients. If you compare S square coefficients, A plus C, and any S square term is there here on right left hand side, no S square term. So, it is 0. A equal to minus C. Then, compare S coefficients on both the sides in the numerator. Here, S coefficient is 2A plus B. And what about here? 1 is there. You can use calcium also to calculate after writing all the three equations. So, B value you substitute and find out the A value. Then what is A? Minus 3 by 4. A value is minus 3 by 4. Correct? Then what about C? Minus A means plus 3 by 4. C is plus 3 by 4. A is minus 3 by 4. And what about B value? 5 by 2. Okay. Clearing the content. Now given function. Given function. That is X of S. What is the given function? S plus 5 by S square into S plus 2. What is the A value we got? Minus 3 by 4. Minus 3 by 4 into 1 by S. Plus B value. 5 by 2 into 1 by S square. Plus C. 3 by 4 into 1 by S plus 2. Plus C by S plus 2. Now apply inverse Laplace transform on both the sides. The inverse Laplace transform on both the sides, then x of t equal to because inverse Laplace transform. One more step you can write inverse Laplace transform of x of s t equal to inverse Laplace transform of the total term. After that, inverse Laplace transform of individual terms, linearity property. Inverse Laplace transform of this total expression is inverse Laplace transform of individual terms plus c is there. Okay, so directly I am writing here two more steps you can include in the middle. Minus 3 by 4 into, what is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by S? U of T. U of T. U of T. Plus 5 by 2 into, what is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by S square? T into, T U, into U of T. T into U of T. Plus 3 by 4 into, we consider it as a causal signal. If nothing is mentioned related to ROC means, by default we take it as a causal signal. Then what is the corresponding time domain function E power? Minus 2t into u of t. Okay. 
okay where what what is our value we are can we have considered here real part of x is greater than minus 2 whole value is minus 2 here okay so this is a procedure to find the inverse laplace transform partial fraction partial fraction i have done first to find the inverse laplace transform so system related two problems we covered same procedure will be there for all the differential equation related problem applying laplace transform taking y of x as x of x ratio finding transfer function finding impulse response same procedure will be there only the thing is the property you have to remember definitely here d power n into x of t by d t power n what is its laplace transform we have x power n into x of s where all the initial conditions are assumed to be zero this property we used in system related while deriving transfer function okay so these are the important topics cos omega t sin omega t laplace transform derivation is important expressing them in the form of exponential terms and finding its corresponding laplace transform clear okay next z transform z transforms z transform so see here in laplace transform uh, first definition roc first the main important point what we discussed in laplace transform in the beginning itself is region of convergence why because in case of fourier transform dirichlet conditions we studied right even in case of fourier series also dirichlet conditions were there they, those are just, just a sufficient conditions not necessary conditions so if we are unable to find fourier transform means that dirichlet conditions are not satisfied by that particular given signal that was our conclusion but we never uh, verified whether the signal is uh, Uh, satisfying that uh, these little conditions are not okay so whenever we are not able to find fourier transform using standard uh, fourier transform formula like signal multiplied with kernel uh, we were depending on properties or some limiting process uh, extra processors were there even by using those processors also for few signals we were not able to find the fourier transform so that disadvantage we have overcome using laplace transform concept concept isn't it based on the term region of convergence means only a particular side it may be left hand side of s plane or right hand side of s plane or in between two poles like that in a particular region there is a existence of laplace transform that means laplace transform is also similar to fourier transform where s equal to j omega isn't it s equal to j omega so like that region of convergence so for few signals in the entire s plane the laplace transform is not existing in a particular region in a confined region there is a existence of laplace transform we call that region as region of convergence okay <clears throat> even to find inverse laplace transform also we need roc that was a concept related to laplace transform then what is the disadvantage with laplace transform can anybody guess in case of laplace transform also what was the signal i have considered there x of t only even in case of lti systems also lti systems also x of t lti h of t y of t so the basic drawback here with the laplace transform is it is it is valid only for continuous time systems continuous time systems so to overcome this i mean to analyze discrete time systems or discrete time signals we are going for z transform again in digital signal processing also z transform concept is there but again in still in signal sense system also it is included under fourth unit second part okay that is z transform <clears throat> so z transform is defined only for discrete systems and discrete signals what is the basic definition z transform is to change a time domain information into z domain but the time domain information is in discrete form not in a continuous form discrete signals sequences we are going to take in z transform okay so put the heading all of you introduction
introduction yeah one more point uh, uh, that is uh, mm, please write here uh, in case of laplace transform that concept is not given in syllabus book but in case of laplace transform stability stability please write that it's not a set that means for a given s domain function for a given s domain x function if all the poles if all the poles are located located on left hand side of s plane and on left hand side of s plane then the system is said to be stable then the system is said to be stable before writing introduction related to laplace transform put the heading stability stable so in control system you are going to deal more with the stability related concepts corresponding to laplace transform here stability concept is not that much included in your syllabus even that statement is also not given that's why we didn't come across this but at least you should have the idea when the system is said to be stable related to s domain concept so if all the poles of a given s domain function are located on left hand side of s plane then the system is said to be stable okay left hand side of s plane means for example see here for example if i take the function 1 by s plus 2 zeros nowhere the stability is nowhere related to zeros zeros may be on right hand side left hand side on imaginary axis we don't bother about zeros at all we will be focusing only on poles to analyze the stability okay so in the numerator whatever may be the function numerator roots are nothing but zeros so we don't consider zeros while deciding the stability concept okay s plus 2 into s plus 3 may be there or whatever may be the factors in the denominator how many poles are there for this function s equal to minus 2 and minus, minus 3. 3 so all the poles two poles are there minus 2 is here minus 3 is there all the poles are located on left hand side left hand side negative side so if all the poles are negative means definitely they will be on left hand side then this is said to be stable okay so we are talking stability concept for a system so generally here actually we will take a transfer function I'm sorry h of s is a standard representation so for a system transfer function if all the poles are located on left hand side of s plane here also you please change it because stability is for a system h of s transfer function if all the poles are located on left hand side of s plane then the system is said to be stable for example if s minus 2 is there here then what happens what is a one pole plus 2 plus 2 so here plus 2 means here pole will be there this is said to be unstable if at least one pole is located on right hand side then the system is said to be unstable okay all the poles must be on left hand side then only the system is said to be stable if at least one pole is located on right hand side unstable for example if the pole values are uh, for example minus 2 minus 3j minus 2 minus 3j then what happens minus 2 minus 3j means just for example i am taking this imaginary poles may be there minus 2 means it will be here Minus three means this is a j omega axis, imaginary axis, right? Imaginary part of s, real part of s. What is the imaginary value? Minus three means it will be here, left hand side only, so stable. So minus two plus three j is there this side. So like that, even if complex poles are also there, we can plot it in the s plane and observe whether they are located on left hand side of the plane or right hand side. If at least one pole is located on right hand side means. definitely it is said to be unstable and again still in this conditionally stable marginally stable uh, so many terminologies will be there that means uh, instead of on this real axis all the poles may be on only imaginary axis or if it is only on imaginary axis means marginally stable that is one more definition so uh, as of now related to signal sand system you just remember this point if all the poles are located on left hand side system is said to be stable if at least one pole is there on right hand side system is said to be unstable okay
So conditional stable, marginally stable definitions will come in control system applications based on poles only, roots of denominator only. Clear? Anybody wants me to repeat any point related to the stability concept? So negative poles are there, positive poles are there for a given system transfer function. Plot them on a screen. Uh, right hand side are located or left hand side are located. Poles are located. Observe that and then you can conclude stable, stable or unstable. Okay. <clears throat> so hope you have copied this stability concept. Now I am, let us just start with Z-transform introduction. Okay. Shall I start Z-transform introduction? Even in, even in case of Fourier transform also stability concept was there, but related to impulse response. That impulse response must be a finite uh, value should be there. Integration minus infinity to infinity, magnitude of H of T must be less than infinity. Minus infinity to infinity, magnitude of H of T dt must be less than infinity. This was the condition for stability of a system in case of Fourier transform. This is a condition in case of Laplace transform. In the same manner, in case of Z-transform also, like that condition will be there. Okay. So Z-transform, uh, as I already said, Z-transform is for discrete time systems and discrete time signals. Okay. Discrete signals means how do we represent X of N? This is a representation of a discrete signal. So generally, X of N is given as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or minus 5 may be there, plus values may be there. Like this, some set of values will be there in a sequence. Discrete signal is also known as a sequence. Remember that point. Discrete signal. Very often we replace discrete signal with a sequence. Like this sequence will be given and one arrow mark will be kept like this. At a particular uh, amplitude value, arrow mark will be kept. So this indicates that wherever arrow mark is there, user have to understand that n equal to zero at sample. That is n equal to zero. That means in this sequence, what is x of zero value? Minus five. Minus five. Minus. What is x of one value then? Six. This side all positive values will be there. This side all negative values will be there. So then what about x of minus one value? Four. X of minus Four. two value? 3. 3. 3. X of minus 3 value is 2. X Two. of minus 4 is 1. So like that, based on index, based on this arrow mark, what is the index of that particular sample value, sam uh, amplitude value? These are the indexes, index values. Okay. So based on arrow mark, we will identify the uh, time, instant of the time instant, 0, 8, 1, minus 1 sample index. Okay. Sometimes X of N, all the amplitude values will be given. Amplitude values may be negative or positive, whatever may be the values here. If arrow mark is not given means, if it is given means, we will start that as N equal to zero and left hand side negative values, right hand side positive values. If nothing is mentioned means, by default, the first one is considered as N equal to zero. If it is not mentioned means, we will take the first one as N equal to zero at index. Clear? So x of 0 value is now 4, x of 1 is 5, x of 2 is 6, x of 3 is 7, x of 4 is 8, like that. Okay. So we are left with only one minute. So I'm stopping this. So we'll continue in next class. Uh, what is the definition of uh, uh, Z-transform? What is the formula and all? Okay. <clears throat>